I played over 40 game demos during NextFest, and here are the games that I think are good enough to wishlist. None of them have firm release dates yet, and they might not ever come out. But hey, wishlisting is free. So here are the games. Indica has easily the most visually arresting promotional images at NextFest. Like, look at this. And that was enough to get me through the door and into the demo. It starts in media res with the nun Indica aiding an injured man who seems to be holding her hostage. The demo immediately gets so weird when extremely 90s video game music and UI pop up, really at odds with the overall realistic vibe. The jarring, gamish sections paired with the surreal demon possession puzzles left me asking what even is this game? But in a way that I was excited about it. Find and identify adorable creatures in Flock. There are plenty of games that are cute creature collectors out there, but Flock really makes you inspect the creature's location and behaviors to find out what variety of an animal they are, which is way more satisfying than just having a UI element pop up and be like, yep, that's a Pikachu. Rotwood is by Clay Studios, which made Don't Starve, a game I played a lot of. It plays a lot like the combat sections of Cult of the Lamb, but it's a four-person multiplayer game. I'm nervous about how busy the screen will get with four people all flinging weapons around and such, but the demo was fun. Exchange letters and recommendations with strangers in a cute interface where everyone has agreed to just be chill. Kind Words 2 belongs to a genre of game that replicates sort of semi-anonymous trivial relationships, the kind that you really take for granted until there's a global pandemic and you can't have them anymore. It's like elevated, anonymous social media. Miniatures seems like a virtual IKEA building style game at first, but the demo rapidly becomes more grotesque in a way that made me very curious to see the full thing. Context is deliberately sparse for both who you are and what's happening, but in a way that made it seem like there might be some hidden depths to plumb. Don't bother Googling it, just find it on Steam, because the SEO for miniatures game is not for this video game, and also Google is bad now. Magical Delicacy was the demo I returned to the most during Next Fest, which kind of surprised me. There is no shortage of cute, witchy, potiony, cottagecore games, but something about Magical Delicacy stuck out. Its aesthetic is richly detailed, the run speed and tall, floaty jump feel really good, and the writing on the conversations is brisk but interesting. Although there are lots of mechanics in the demo, cooking, gathering, I didn't feel overwhelmed or bogged down by them. Every moment felt effortless and satisfying. Rusty's retirement is a throwback to the desktop buddies of my youth. Remember the sheep? Did any of you have the sheep? It's a lower bar based video game that is mostly automated. You'll drop seeds here and there, but mostly Rusty the Robot will run this farm with the help of some little robo friends. If you've watched my most recent essay about vampire survivors and zone out media, you already know why I'm into this game. I even had it running while I was editing this video. It's the perfect half game to encourage you to take little mental breaks throughout your day. Or to be really distracting to you while you're at work. There is nothing about the advertising of Dysomancer that made me expect anything other than a pretty basic deck builder, which is fine. I downloaded it because I was looking for a pretty basic deck builder. But not too far into the demo, you get a peek at some interesting complexity. Specifically, you get a card that lets you change any number on the screen to a random dice roll, like any number. Enemy health, gold in your wallet, attack power. It is like a cheat card, and it basically breaks the whole concept that deck builders are built on. That and some of the story stuff that you get in the demo hints that there might be kind of a meta layer to Dysomancer that I am interested in. Duck Detective, the secret salami, gets my award for most committed to the bit. Duck Detective is going through a rough divorce, but he's on the job. Gameplay is the increasingly familiar style of finding words and putting them in places to solve mysteries. But the voice of Duck Detective and the writing really sell the downtrodden, washed up noir detective who is also a duck. I haven't had a, a slice of bread in weeks. Haunty. Haunty gets my award for best demo at Next Fest, although Indica is a close second. The light outline on a dark background is so eye-catching, and the gameplay is delightful. You possess different objects and make them act or interact with the world in new ways. But the reason why it's the best demo is because very quickly after you start playing, you experience this wonderful visual and audio crescendo. It's insanely moving. It might give you goosebumps. And that's just the demo. 
Were there any standout indie game demos that you played that you would recommend to me? Because if so, drop a comment and tell me about them so that I can keep an eye out for their release.